welcome to a review of the Debati One stroller. Hi there, welcome back to me and my baby, your guide to super mommy life. I'm Jessica, an aspiring super mom and lover of coordinated things. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Debati One stroller. We're going to be looking at hints and tips for using it, folding it up and putting it in the car. You may also want to take a look at our review on our running buggy, which was the Nipper Out and About Sport V4, which is linked in the description down below. So this is the Debati One stroller. This is the setup we use from birth. Uh, you have hood up and down. There's this bar that can detach from both sides and both sides at the same time, which is very useful. There are some buggies which are trying to slip your kid under said roll bar. Uh, there's this sort of wind resistant panel. And then you've got the handlebar that can go up and down. The mattress in this was particularly good. It's got a slightly wider end for the head end, so you get a bit of an incline. Um, particularly good if they've got any kind of roof flux in the early days. I thought it was a very smart looking buggy. I have had lots of comments. You can adjust it, but with the bassinet, you tend to find you don't do that very much and then it detaches really easily. This was quite handy, we actually took the bassinet bit to like friends and um, she snoozed in there while we had dinner with them. Uh, there's a lovely bag underneath that isn't massive, that's probably one of the things, the bag underneath not being as big as some of the other buggies. But you've got the option here at the front, you can lock the wheel or have them moving. So the locking the wheel is meant to be the more off-roady. We tend to never lock them if I'm honest. A running buggy now for the more bumpy but it's nice to know you could do it you've also got the kick brake it's nice and easy to use which is great i've seen some buggies with very hard brakes so this buggy allows you to attach a couple of different car seats we have the maxi cozy pebble and the little attachments are like 25 quid and you slot them in and then you can slot the car seat in this is really handy you, you want these bits Getting it on is just a case of line up one and push the other one on. It's the getting off bit that really stumped us and I had to email them. Uh, you push the two grey buttons but when your buggy's new you're going to have to do it pretty hard. So here you've got sort of the three main bits that come with this buggy. On the left you've got the base, the middle bit is all the DVDs to change it into a seat and then the bassinet bit is on the right. And I'm going to show you how to turn the bassinet into the seat. There's actually no age restrictions on the seat with this one. They basically say when you think your kid is safe in the seat, then that's okay for the seat bit. So like a lot of buttons of this style, you're actually using the same metal frame for the top bit of the buggy as you are for the seat. This one's got two little poppers which you take off first, and then the zip is in case, like literally where the zip does up, it's encased in two bits of Velcro, and you zip it off the frame simpler than it is. It's a little bit fiddly but you're kind of not going to be doing it very often. Uh, once you go into the seat it's unlikely you'll do it maybe once or twice more. Occasionally you want to jump back to the back now for some reason. Uh, there's also two clips top and two clips bottom that you just need to undo on the bassinet but you don't reattach these when you attach it to the just like the harness and seat. It was so cold when I was filming this, my hands were struggling. So you would probably make this look slightly easier if you did it somewhere warm, on a tropical beach, not in freezing cold British weather. So you just have to get the zips lined back up again and again. It's a bit of a fiddle and it was particularly tough because it was cold. It took me a little while longer than I would have liked. your kid isn't like trying to unzip it because once they're a bit bigger they do things like that and it's really helpful. So you want to make sure that all the final attachments are done up the, the bottom zip is so much easier like the hood is in there. But there you go you can see the little velcro things that fold over and then there's little poppers again on this one so there's no four big clips but there are So 
So you've also got this little panel, but with the suit thing, it doesn't leave much room for little feet. So when she was tiny, we used this, partly because we hadn't bought the mark yet, uh, but partly because she had the legs still and they still could fit. So if you take the roll bar off, I don't know if it's officially called a roll bar, but I think it's a roll bar. Uh, and then we got this foot mark that was lovely. So this doesn't come with it, and it does tend to have the same order time as the buggy, so I would just buy it at the same time as the buggy if I did it again. I'd seen some other like cute pink fluffy ones that I thought I would buy, and actually when it came down to it, I wanted it all to match. You have to undo all the straps so they're into like five separate pieces. It's really obvious how you do that, there's just like clips, clipping bits of glue put together. Uh, it's also a good time to check if the sizes and things are right on your small human. Bear in mind, you're only going to want the foot muff in like the colder months. We're now There are a couple of different holes for each strap based on how big your kid is. So you can make sure the straps are lower down to the shoulders so they're sort of well fitted. Loose straps are just a bit silly. The kid bounces around, it's dangerous. Um, so make sure they're fitted in the right hand. This bar came with the buggy, not sure if it's meant to, can't work out what it's for. I've checked online, still zero clues on where this is meant to go in the buggy. So this base clips in in the same way that the bassinet did, just slides into the little slots, a little bit of a wiggle, and then you can adjust with the big round buttons. So the big round buttons do the adjusting, the grey slidey buttons are the ones for pulling it in and out. Rear facing or forward facing. The day it go, you go forward facing is quite sad because it's like they don't need to see me anymore. But they like going on their little adventures and being able to look at everything. She particularly loves pointing out ducks and trees. We've also got this little parasol. Now this little parasol is not particularly well designed. You get it in the perfect place to block out the sun and it moves, like it rotates spins quite easily. I don't know if maybe we've got a slightly dodgy one, but it is. I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying it. You might be better trying to find one that works somewhere else and as you can see it's a bit fiddly to get it to, to clip on the buggy. It bounces a lot, so if you're on a bouncy road you kind of lose your shade as well. Um, we do use it, but I feel like you could probably find better that works on your buggy and I'm getting better at adjusting it so it doesn't disappear but some walks I'm finding I'm sort of holding it in position while we're walking but it's better than the sun going in my eyes so that's fine. So one of the extra things you can buy to go with this buggy is the extra large shopping bag. My hands are very cold as I said before and I found it quite fiddly. But I've also not used it before, it's poppered on and I feel like the poppers needed a bit of warming up. But you pop it onto the handle and then it poppers on down below, uh, sort of at the base of the buggy, and it gives you like this extra large shopping bag. So I'm not going to pop the bottom one, but I'm just going to hold it in case. That would pop there and then you've got extra storage, but you can only use it when the kids are still facing. The handlebar has got a really easy adjustment, you just press the big button in the middle. We've got high, medium and then low, but it doesn't lock in the low. So I'll be the first one to admit that I didn't necessarily buy this buggy for its practical uses. I just really wanted it um, and luckily it's turned out to be a really good purchase. But one of the downsides is folding it up and the space it takes in the back of the car. I used to have a Peugeot 308, I now have a 4x4 predominantly because of this buggy. Um, I love the new car, which is also a bonus. Uh, but to get this in the car, you have to put it into the two parts. So you lift that one out, 
sometimes if I'm being really lazy, that bit ends up on the back seat or in the front seat. Always good to put the brake on before you do all of this. And then there is a button, spin it around just here, push in, it clicks and it lifts it up. I mean, it's really simple, but it's really annoying that it's two bits, but most of the big buggies now are. Uh, it's only when the kids are a bit older, you can get one of the easy sort of collapsible strollers. And then that goes in like that. And this one has to get wedged in on top. I did fit this in a 308, but um, I had to keep my parcel shelf out, which really annoys me. And I don't think it's particularly safe having stuff loose with no partial shelf for the majority of the time. Quite often when we go out with this one in the car now, I just use the car seat attachment, so I haven't got this bit with me anyway. Um, but it does take up most of the boot. You can fit a bit of shopping and stuff in. And yes, if this is on the back seat, it does make a lot more room. Um, but this isn't particularly light frame, so if you say, lived in an apartment and had to lift it up and down stairs or only had a small hallway to store it in it's probably not going to be the buggy for you. As you can see this buggy handles big curves really well you just tip it back slightly and you can pop it up the step. I have found the suspension on this particularly good and a lot of friends have commented that my buggy seems a lot smoother than theirs which is nice. I've been really impressed with how this buggy handles. Uh, it's very smooth. The turning circle on it is really good. So maneuvering in and out of like small spaces, shops. It's handled public transport. It handles the bumpy park really well. But I picked cream, so it gets a bit dirty. While you're not completely turning on the dime, uh, the turning circle and steering on this is a lot better than of any of my friends' buggies. Yep. So I did this little test with the running buggy which it massively failed, whereas you can see a little slalom test with this buggy and it totally makes it uh, much more practical for the ground. So much nicer steering this way. It's also pretty good when you're handling tricky situations, like we have these kissing gates into the park near our house and I can go forward, backwards, get in and out. One of the great features for me personally about this buggy is the fact they have thought about tall people. Not only does the handle adjust up and down, but they've specifically made good kick room. So those with longer legs aren't walking into the buggy. Brilliant. I love this buggy, but for me it's missing one thing, and that is never ending Prosecco with a straw. Please comment below with the one thing your dream buggy would also include. Thank you for watching. Please hit like if you found this mildly entertaining or in any way helpful. Do subscribe so you never miss out on a video again. Also hunt us down on Instagram to follow our many mini adventures. Thank you and see you soon.